This week at the cafe, cyber communities. This is GeoCities, perhaps the world's largest online community. Scott Kernett is the founder of The Mining Company, an innovative approach to a co-op community. Check out Yahoo Clubs, an attempt to turn a major portal into several communities. Megan Smith runs Planet Out, a niche community that gets 10 million page views a month. And welcome to Hipbone, a new way to go community surfing with your friends. Cyber Communities, coming up next. The Net Cafe is made possible in part by Cybersmith. Wired for fun and learning with locations in Cambridge, Massachusetts, Palo Alto, California, and White Plains, New York. And by TechWeb for up-to-the-minute technology news. We're talking about cyber communities, and it's really fascinating what's happened. I mean, I guess there were the Well folks many years ago, and then I guess CompuServe forums, and then AOL, and now the web, and news groups, and everybody's into it, including my friend Jim. Yeah, well, I, I don't know if you guys remember, but I worked at sort of one of the 3D avatar chat-based oh, communities, right. That's right. and that kind of came and it kind of went. Yes, so it did. I'm excited to see that there's a, a sort of a new push around community, a little more user-friendly and pretty interesting. But if I kind of like that 3D stuff. I think that'll come back. You think so? Yeah. It's still isolated community, though. You're still on your computer all by yourself, so? connecting remotely. So it's still not truly community. Not face to face. It's not like hanging around with you guys. We'll talk about that <laughs> later. This is Scott Kernett, your founder of MiningCo.com. It's a very cool site, but it takes some explaining because when you look at it right away, it kind of looks a little bit like Yahoo or maybe NetCenter, sort of, you know, sort of normal portal, but there's a lot more to, to that. And I want you to explain the difference and what your philosophy is behind MiningCo. Sure. I mean, first and foremost, it is in that navigation space. Right. But what we did was we went out and recruited over 600 experts in specific subject areas and built them many online services that when they all aggregate together you get a great directory and you also get a uh, great community with chat bulletin boards uh, right. at each of the sites so i heard somebody say this is like yahoo with people and when you go to your site i mean you see names and pictures i mean you have a sense there is a community of real human beings out there is that the essential part of mining code yeah i mean any community to be to really be good whether it's a city or whether it's a company right. needs somebody who you respect to lead it to have just a mass of people uh, becomes anarchy. So what we've done is we said, okay, let's put people who really know what they're talking about at the helm. They'll dig up stuff on the net, they'll write original articles, they'll run chat and bulletin boards, they'll answer your email uh, contractually in 24 hours, but right. you know, they're usually on it right away. Uh, so you're really in touch with getting the information and connecting with people that are interesting to you with somebody at the helm. Okay, but the point is, as I understand it, you didn't hire these people. I mean, they contract with you, right? I mean, you sort of gathered guys who are already running cool websites. You said, let's all get together in one sort of place and we'll provide infrastructure. Yeah, so what we did was we said, you know, you've got a great website, but let's make it all common. Let's recreate what you've done. So we now have guides operating out of over 20 countries. They all operate within the same system and structure, so we're able to pull all the chat rooms out or all the bulletin boards or all the directories. So anyone who's going in for that unified uh, directory approach can get it, or if you're going for community, okay. you can get that too. So you call these people guides, and a guide is actually maybe a guy who was running his own little website, who's a real expert in some area, and now he's part of Mining Co., is that the idea? Exactly. So the, the guides are independent contractors. They work for a cut of the revenue. They're all professionals. Okay, so it's kind of a co-op, is that the idea? Well, it's a, it, it, the, all the sites are company controlled because we, we first and foremost have to uh, really guarantee editorial integrity and the trust between consumer right, so and, run the, and the total service, absolutely. All right, but if I'm a guide, what's my job? Your, your job as a guide is to run a full-fledged site on a topic, whether that's uh, back okay. and neck injury or video game uh. strategies. And, and you are to find all the links that are relevant on the net to be better than Yahoo just in link finding. And then also we want you to run a bulletin board chat room, uh, original content, and all of the structure that creates community by bringing people together Okay, and these well. guides can make money doing this. I mean, you're selling ads on the big site and sharing revenue with these guys? Absolutely. The guides are basically working for 40% of the revenue uh, and starting to make some serious money. Huh. All right, now what are the kinds of areas you go in? I mean, it, it's pretty deep, right? I mean, you get to just about any interest you could think of on the mining code. Well, we have, we, we, we have 630 sites that actually cover 12,000 topics. Wow. So there really isn't anything at this point that we're not covering. And we cover everything from pregnancy to composite materials industry to uh, uh, Mark Twain. All right, finally, let me ask you. I know you have a kind of war going on with Yahoo. You're sort of competitors with Yahoo, and I suppose that's the point. What's your disagreement with Yahoo? Well, Yahoo doesn't list our individual sites, and we, we are a network of sites. They claim that we're a network structure, 
uh -huh. yet they list all uh, 2,000 listings into the ZIF sites, which is a sister company. Right. So it really isn't a, a, the right argument. And, and our view is you either have to be, you know, have real editorial integrity and list what's out there and provide the best right. for people, or you have to say it. Uh, <laughs> it's, you know, it's, you know, if you can either be, uh, you know, for the people who are using the net and provide right. them what's out there, uh, but, but you really have to put that message out. Yeah. And, and they're not doing that. And so a Christianity site on the mining company <laughs> is not getting found on Yahoo, and it should. All right. My guess is Mining Co. will attract enough people. Hopefully, you won't have to worry about it. We, we <laughs> think so, too. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. For URLs of today's featured websites, just go to the Net Cafe site at cnptv.com. Mark, one of the things that I'm always complaining to Andrew and Stuart is that People spend too much time surfing the web, it's a very isolated thing, and it's very antisocial, and now you've got this new technology called Co-Navigator, which is kind of ruining my argument. Explain a little bit more about what Co-Navigator does. Right. Yeah, the web today is a really lonely experience, and we think we've got something to combat that. Hipbone's got the first free internet co-navigation service, and what that is, is it allows two people to navigate the web together and essentially what we can do so simultaneously they can surf various sites together right I click if we're co-navigating Jan you click on a link I follow I click on a link and you follow so we can do other things we not only can we surf the web but we can fill out forms we can download files we can play audio together and we can watch video together at the same time now the way that you get hipbone connected is you go to hipbone.com and and what you do is you essentially start a Java applet that, that runs in your browser. So I don't need to download a plugin. There's right. no special services I need. Is no that right? plugins at all. It's really easy. The only requirement is that you need uh, Netscape, the newest Netscape and the newest Internet Explorer. So I need the latest version, and, and right. then I go from there. And those are guaranteed that and you'll so, work. And so some examples. I, when, I, when you're describing this co-navigation, to me, it seems like what I would be prone to do is if I'm, ta if I'm trying to get connected with somebody across the country, I'm going to phone them and say, hey, let's go co-navigate co together. Are there other ways that you know, I can do that? It sounds a little in inefficient to do it, like on the phone. The, the phone is a, a great way to uh, enable a co-navigation session. There are actually other ways. You can use chat, and everybody's familiar with chat. And there's also instant messaging, which is a cool way so to hook up to share. So you, know, you find your, your, whoever you're going to co-navigate with in, through any of those mechanisms, and you can hook up. OK, so give me some examples of some of the ways people are using it. It's a brand new product. I mean, it's only a few months old, but you must have some people trying it out. Right, and it's really exciting to watch what people are actually using it for. We've got one user. She's, she's co-navigating with her mother across the country. Which, co-navigating with your mother even in a car is a challenge <laughs> sometimes. But. Yeah, and she's, what she's doing is she's, she's planning for her wedding, and she's at Bride's Modern Bride Modern or Bride something like com. that. Yeah. That's, that's oh, what is it? Is. Okay. Modernbride.com. And uh, she's picking out the wedding dress and going for the bridesmaid dresses and even getting tips for, for the audio and, and the different flowers, types of music. The ceremony. The whole thing. And then after that, she goes off to Macy's.com and does the bridal registry. So it's a really interesting approach to, to using the web. So I can just see the mother and the daughter in the chat room saying, I want to say ivory. No, 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 white, ivory. No. Right. Just going on forever. So what are some other examples? So there's another, uh, uh, there's another company called resources.com, and it's more of a business-to-business -business relationship. Resources.com is a portal for designers and manufacturers and buyers that all come together that want to share common information about perhaps uh, it's actually building out uh, office space. Okay, so, so these guys can basically collaborate on you know on the web together and do the designs exactly. and, and the layouts right. and those types of things. You know, specking out what type of chairs are involved all the way out to the like, what type of light bulbs are used. So there's really a broad application. Now, as I said, this is a pretty new product. It's only a few months old. Mm -hmm. What's the next step? How are you going to take the next uh, step forward? So the main thing, we just want to keep making it easier. So we've got we've got it enabled through a Java plugin or right. a Java, An applet, so, Java yeah. applet, right. And um, the next step, of course, is just to make that simpler. And we've got some other plans that the, the, your viewers will see in the upcoming so months. So some ideas of getting into some online communities and making it more pervasive. And right. We, have to, we absolutely want to hook up with, uh, with these online communities, and they'll actually see that because the communities, as you know, are a great way to bring people together that have a common interest. So this is really the next step. It's exactly. really cool. Co-navigator. Check it out. Thanks. For URLs of today's featured websites, just go to the Net Cafe site at cnptv.com.
So, Megan, you are the, the president and CEO, big title here, of, um, <laughs> of Planet Out. Yeah. And uh, I think it's got to be probably one of the largest gay and lesbian communities online. I understand you guys are on AOL, you're on the web. Um, why is the, the gay and lesbian community as a whole a natural to be on the web? Well, yes, our site, we, we are the largest uh, gay and lesbian internet site out there. How, um, how, many, how many people? people? Yeah. So half a million people a month wow. visiting Planet Out, about okay. 10, 12 million page views. And um, I guess the reason why people are online is because yeah. it's in some places in our country and around the world, it's not safe to be out mm -hmm. and to be openly gay or lesbian yeah. or bi or trans. And mm -hmm. so, you know, in fact, in this country, in 41 states, you can be fired for mm -hmm. being gay. So mm -hmm. it's a really safe place yeah. to, to come online and find other gay and lesbian people. I mean, a lot of us, I live in San Francisco, mm -hmm. so I have access to the Castro, which right. is a wonderful neighborhood. If you but live in Washington, you've got that, DuPont yeah. Circle. If you have New York, you have Greenwich Village. But not everyone has that. Mm -hmm. So Planet Out is really the cyberspace gay community. The community. Great. So do you find that a lot of your users are coming from maybe, you know, not the larger urban centers or, uh, you know, sort of diverse areas? Yeah, we have people from all over the country. I'd say, you know, it's probably 8 or 10 percent of our site comes from the New York metropolitan area, mm. but people come from all over. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, 30 percent of the website comes from overseas. Mm. So lots of people from Canada, Japan, the UK, Germany, but we also have people from all over Africa, from really? uh, Asia, from just all over the world. Okay. So, very so you're really providing a, a safe place to discuss issues. What are some of the kind of, you know, fun, interesting, or, you know, serious things, things that, that go on? Be. Yeah. A huge range. Um, okay. There are some serious things. Mm -hmm. There's some fun things. We have a very big um, sort of uh, film area called mm -hmm. Pop Q, which is like the largest gay and lesbian film site out there. You can, wow. you can actually watch film online and um, so, so small snippet videos, of, yeah, okay. uh, in quick time and okay. real, real videos. And these are mostly movies that somehow are relating to gay and lesbian lifestyle or, or just movies in general? A whole combination. Some mm -hmm. of them are gay-themed films, like something like in and out or uh, uh, As Good As It Gets. Mm -hmm. And some of them are more sort of drama camp, mm -hmm. funny commercials from the past, and wow. even some old news clips like Anita Bryant uh, getting a pie Absolutely in the face. Famous, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so okay. Some, some of those are up there. So, so lots of archived video. real history. Um, and of course, with all of our different sites, there's a back a commerce back end so you mm -hmm. can buy videos online okay. from popcorn Q. which is also great because not everybody has access to right. the stores around yeah. very important we have music areas we have a travel area personal mm -hmm. finance we have a very serious news team um, okay. we publish five stories of gay lesbian news every day now and so you have a dedicated staff of mm -hmm. journalists that are in Three your company in okay. Los Angeles, and right. they write all night, okay. and they publish yeah. in the morning. Right. I was actually reading tonight. There was this, you know, terrible story of a young man who was killed. I think somewhere in uh, where Matthew was that? Yeah. yeah. And uh, so it seemed like you had very in-depth coverage, and we're really exploring all the all the issues. Are those the kind of? That's the kind of story yeah. we we covered. The Andrew Cananan story. Mm -hmm. We covered the Tim McVeigh story. We're covering the Matthew Shepard story. Really mm -hmm. sad stories. Yeah. Um, we're able to pull together news and also work together with our nonprofit teams. Um, mm -hmm. People like the Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation, GLAAD, or the Human Rights Campaign, or various nonprofit groups, right. and link to their sites and link to action sites. Right, right now, there's links into Matthew's uh, reaching Matthew's parents and donating uh, to the causes. Wonderful. Okay, real quick, where is the future going for for uh, Planet Out? Well, we've got a combination of entertainment, a lot of community chat and message boards, personals. Mm -hmm. We're really um, bringing people together. I think Pop and Q will go, grow up to be a gay and lesbian film channel wow. itself. Really popular. But really working on making it a home based place for people to get news and information, entertainment, talk to each other, mm. meet each other, right. and have a great time. I think it's a great sense of community uh, space for a, a group that really needs that space. We're here with Larry Maggot again, syndicated columnist and all around internet expert. Larry, we're talking about cyber communities tonight. And you know, there's still this debate around, is, is a virtual friend as good as a real friend, better or worse? You know, some parents are worried, they think my kid's living in this sort of electronic world. What's happened to face-to-face -face friends? Well, you can't get pregnant or a, or a disease <laughs> from a virtual <laughs> okay. friend. That's the good news. <laughs> not yet. Uh, not yet, at least. Uh, maybe a computer virus. <laughs> right. um, you know, you can have a relationship, and we know of cases, I guess with Rush Limbaugh met his wife on right, CompuServe. Right. And, uh, but personally, I would just seem to have real friends. I think there is that risk that you you create this sort of isolated sort of cyber community 
and you don't go out and you know meet real people. But for some people, it's a very important part of their lives, and they might not otherwise have that. I mean, people say, "Hey, I've got friends all over the world." Now mm -hmm. we meet every night, and so on. Oh, there are people for whom this really has become a real community, yeah. and they get together and they have parties and they interact. And you know, it's hard to knock it for people who are really enjoying it. I worry more about kids when they get totally fixated on these cyber yeah. friends and they don't have a real life. Then I just kind of worry. So maybe about it them. should be adults only for cyber communities. Well, yeah, or adults <laughs> that can at least uh, you know have some control of what they're doing. Last question. You know, we have cyber communities now, and the technology is kind of primitive. I mean, it's typewriter communities yeah. in a way. What happens when we get the bandwidth in a couple of years and there's audio, video, virtual friends? Wait, we get X-rated uh, communities. I think, the, I think there is a, the risk that, that people are going to get carried away. And again, maturity is real important. People have to look at this stuff with a grain of salt, not get too carried away, and, and just enjoy yeah. it for what it is. For URLs of today's featured websites, just go to the Net Cafe site at cmptv.com. So, Mark, you're from Yahoo Club. And it seems like the, the portal sites are kind of going around in circles. I think community was way back at the beginning, and now suddenly community is back again four years later. Um, tell me about clubs. Uh, you know, what is a, a club? What is a club? On the web. Uh, for Yahoo, a club is really about um, just personal community space for our users. Now you talked about the circle and how mm -hmm. we've come around. In the past two years, what we've done is we've seen uh, users saying, you know, I want my personal space on Yahoo. I want a place I can call my own, a place that I can control mm -hmm. and, and share information with my friends and build relationships. But this is different than a, a personal website, right? Certainly. This is a, a members only kind of thing? It, it can be, or it can be open to the public. It depends on the kind of member base that you're looking for. It's really about building relationships, though, and that's mm -hmm. the difference between us and some other sites. They're mainly focused on home pages. Okay. Um, we give you the tools to build those relationships with people, whether it be a chat room, or a message board list. It's not about looking at a static page. It's mm -hmm. about communicating with each other. Okay, well, let me give me a couple examples. I, uh, I belong to a men's group, very sure. California thing. Right. Okay, we've got together for the last five years right. on a Monday night, so I miss it a lot because I'm here at this show. Uh, but uh, my girlfriend's in an investment club as well. Mm -hmm. What are some of the kind of things we could do with a, a Yahoo Club type thing? Uh, for the men's club, that's a, that's a great example. Say you couldn't make the meeting right. or you didn't want to know what's going on. People could post what happened in that meeting. Uh, they could have a discussion about it. And mm -hmm. say there was a good chunk of people that couldn't mm -hmm. make it. They could have a live chat later on in the week where they could discuss those issues a little bit more further. Uh, in the case of an invest, investment club, mm -hmm. uh, you have a lot of people in there who are talking about what happened in the market today. Uh, they're pointing out links to areas where uh, the market is changing or little profiles of mm -hmm. stocks that they have their eye on. Uh, so it's a lot of places where they can really share information and again talk with each other and, and uh, get into the issues. Okay, now with the men's group, obviously maybe I don't want the whole world to right. see what I'm doing. So how could I make it more uh, more private, more focused just on the members of the sure. group? Sure, and that's a good point. That's mm -hmm. a, what a lot of people are interested in, especially families. Right. They want a club that's a little bit more private. We mm -hmm. have the ability to make a club what we call unlisted. Mm. And by that, it's not searchable in the directory. It's mm. not accessible by anyone who does not have an invitation. Mm. So a member or the person who creates the club has to send an invitation out to other members. That's the way you get into the okay. club, and that's how you access the information. And you need a passcode, or you can just... It's all done through cookies, so okay. it's really in, pretty much invisible to the user. Great. So once I'm on, I just go on, I can get on any Exactly. Time. Okay, give me some examples of some fun, kind of crazy clubs that sure. people are, well, are creating. Our number one club so far is the Hanson Fan Club, attracting oh. uh, the, the love and uh, sweethearts of the Hanson <laughs> everywhere. Okay. Uh, it has about 1,700 members, and these guys are really just using it to the fullest potential. They have this club, and they're chatting every day. You go in, the chat room is near capacity. And these are just fans that created Fans this? of Hanson. Well, it's actually the official fan club is the one that's the most popular. Okay. The Hanson band has, through their manager, mm -hmm. set up an official club through us. Mm. And they post, you know, here's what's going on with the band. Here's uh, what's coming up. And post a little note. Hey, from the road, Zach says hi. And the, so Hanson the, actually is involved in this exactly, club. Exactly. And, wow. and they come in and they get things started. Mm -hmm. And once they get things started, they, the club members take off and just let things elevate from there. That's probably a good example of one of the official clubs right, that are more right. popular. Okay, so more on the, the homegrown <laughs> sure, side. Sure, the grassroots level. Uh, there is a club, actually, that a friend of mine pointed to me to the other day for a friend that went to the Peace Corps in Mali, Africa. Mali, middle of nowhere. You wouldn't think there is an internet connection, but there happened to, right. happens to be one in a, a diplomat's office, or I'm uh, sorry, the embassy. Mm -hmm. This woman who joined the Peace Corps, who was recently from Silicon Valley, joined in there and joined a club, and she shares information in Mali from what's going on over there, but likewise, her friends here communicate with her in this one forum. They say, you know, October 9th, I'll be in a chat room, and so we can all talk with her live internationally, mm -hmm. keeping that relationship going 
despite the fact that we're on two different So it's a pretty, a pretty broad range. Well, Certainly. We'll have to go check out Yahoo Clubs. Definitely. For URLs of today's featured websites, just go to the Net Cafe site at cmptv.com. So David, we're talking about online communities and it would seem kind of crazy to have a discussion about online communities and not have one of the largest online communities on the web today and that's GeoCities. Now you're the founder and you know I have one question. Before we start talking about GeoCities, I'm a little confused. There's all this talk about online communities and there's all this talk about portals. What? Are, are they both the same thing? What's the difference between a portal and an online community? Jane, that's a good question. I think we should start with how we define online community and we really define it four ways. One, common interest. People to come together because they have a desire to meet others of similar interest. So whether it's about sports or politics or finance movies. or entertainment, movies, TV shows, GeoCities has 41 neighborhoods and 500 some themes of, of common interest. So that's number one. Number two, people join a community because they're looking to to get something out of it. They're looking to meet new friends, they're looking to share their experiences, thoughts, and ideas, or maybe they join a community because by virtue of the fact they join, they get discounts on goods and services. So there's some payback. Number three, every community, whether it's in the real world or on the internet, has an economic infrastructure. And we have that at GeoCities. We're primarily advertising supported. And then number four is what I call the litmus test. And that's the participation and effort and the contribution the members make. I think what creates a community is when the members care about the site, they put their own effort into helping make it grow. That's what we are as a community. Now a portal site's a little different. A portal site is a, is a place where people come to and they pass through. That's the definition of what a portal is. And at GeoCities we found that people come and they stay. They, they find others who have a similar interest or they set up their own home page or go in one of our chat rooms. So that's, I think that's the difference. But, but one of the things with portal sites, though, is that when people are trying to really grow their portal site, they add things like community or chat, uh, free home pages, which I know is a really big part of GeoCities. Right. So are the lines getting grayer between an online community in its purest form and, and, a, and a portal site? Oh, I think so. And, and when you look at what community is, community is, is really ideally suited to the Internet. I mean, the Internet was formed as a joint venture between the government and academia and business. And it was to allow those people to share common interest on you know, defense projects and other things. Well, GeoCities has really tapped into what the core strength of the internet is. One, it gives people a sense of participation. It gives them an opportunity to express themselves. And two, it allows them to meet other people of similar interest. And I think a lot of other sites are just now tapping into the power of what the internet's all about. So with GeoCities, you've got a lot of people coming to your site. I mean, how many users do you have today? How many? We have over two and a half million active members and 15 million visitors a month. So it's a busy site. Busy site, and and you've organized it in neighborhoods. Is that right? Or how does it? GeoCities areas? has 40 communities of interest, and the interesting thing is we've created a context for those themes, and we use the names of real places to evoke a theme. So. Silicon Valley is our community for high tech. And We've got Wall Street. we got Wall Street for finance. We have Bourbon Street for jazz. We have Nashville for country music. We have Hollywood for entertainment. And so we've created a state of mind by using familiar place names. And those are the broad neighborhood definitions in GeoCities. OK, so I jump into, let's say, Bourbon Street. And I'm, right. I'm a, a jazz aficionado. And I want to start my own home page. The, the one thing, you're, you're offering me a free home page. Right. But the one thing is, is to design a home page, it's, it's really technical. It's very complicated. You know, How do Jane, you... it's, if you can use a mouse, and if you're a jazz fan, you could have great jazz page up in Bourbon Street in five, ten minutes. You can point to your favorite jazz sites on the net. You can upload graphics to your favorite jazz artists. And most important, you can meet other jazz fans right, right in Bourbon Street. So basically, I can, I can pick the community I want to be in, and I can create my own home page and then the world is my oyster. As you know, we have say. some interesting examples of members who have all gotten together and joined in the same street or block in the neighborhood, and that started a little club, and then it gets bigger and bigger from there, and all of a sudden you have a thriving community all around, around jazz. Well, if people want to check out the real online community, GeoCities is one of the hot sites to check out. Thanks so www.geocities.com. So what did we find out is new with the cyber communities? Well, I thought Planet Out was one of the best uses of community, really taking a group that needs a community safe, a safe space, and yeah. brings them all together. Very and impressive. Brings them out. And brings them out. And what was best for you? The co-navigator tool was really cool. I mean, I think it's the beginning of something beautiful. Wow.
Well, Mining Co., we all call it Mining Company, but it's miningco.com. Uh, with Scott Kerner, the guy I talked to, it's a very interesting site. It really puts people back on the web. We complain about it's all sort of impersonal. Right. You really know there are human beings behind it, and it really it makes a big difference to me, so I kind of like that. Anyhow, that's our look at cyber communities, and that's it for tonight at CyberSmith. We'll see you here next time. The Net Cafe is made possible in part by CyberSmith. Wired for fun and learning with locations in Cambridge, Massachusetts, Palo Alto, California, and White Plains, New York. And by TechWeb for up-to-the-minute technology news. To purchase a videotape copy of today's program, call toll-free 1-888-310-7850. Please specify the show number and the topic.